Gray, what did you think about the show? Okay, yeah, I, I thought it was good. I, I I dropped a tweet when I finished episode eight. It, I for me the second half was better than the first half because like first half was you can see a lot of there's more there's more woke stuff in my opinion in the first half because like especially with episode one with Lucy oh I'm so good at everything it's like oh god <laughs> then her wimp <laughs> and her wimpy loser <laughs> brother like oh shit man this is good this I'm is, good at nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good at nothing. Lucy's good at everything. So, but then it it got, it got better. Then it got better in the later episodes. Did, here's the thing about a uh, story continuity or the Fallout universe as a whole. I was, I already came in at the expectation that it will deviate from the games or from from that. It it won't be entirely fa- be faithful to the story. Like mm-hmm. I I consider the games and the TV show to be its own thing. I think it's like it's an alternate universe if, for me. That's why I didn't think of it as a big deal. Oh, why did they, did, why did they nuke Shady Sands when it's NCR territory and stuff like that? For me, it's like I just consider this an alternate reality of of the Fallout universe. That's why. And woke stuff. I mean, it's natural already. It's like it's for me. It's like default. It's just that maybe they just they should that shouldn't be the center, the centerpiece of the plot point. So that's why I was mm-hmm. kind of fine with it. it. Yeah, better than it's better that they're not there. But I, I mean, it's it's modern day Hollywood. <laughs> they have to sprinkle that in because of the ESG money. But other than that, I think if you don't consider like the continuity, the lore of the the video games, I think it's good overall in a sense that I imagine it generated some sales, especially they're being sold right now for very cheap. Like you can mm. get the whole entire Fallout Three for like five bucks, entire Fallout Four for like ten bucks. I I think it helped a lot in terms of generating sales and bringing people into Fallout itself. So that's why I think, generally speaking, it it's good, even though it's not meant for the ultra hardcore people who prefer that they continue the story properly. I still mm. uh at, at least it brought a lot of people in. I think at least that's my opinion. But yeah, yeah like I. I consider it like more of a normie. Like it's mm-hmm. it's more like okay, um let, let's make everything more uh cohesive, tie everything together. I'm, I'm pretty sure like like the ghoul, I'm not sure that if if that's a character, like an actual character, the cowboy ghoul. I'm not sure if Lucy, I'm not sure if Maximus, like all these characters, I'm pretty sure they in some way are actual characters that are like that, but I'm not sure if they're actual characters in the in, in the game. But um let me Gray, let me know if you hear this. How do I sound? Oh, it, it pretty. It sounds like. Are you trying to replicate the old school voice in Fallout? Or yeah, just, just yeah, yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Clear. I can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It doesn't sound that weird. I'm gonna turn it off. But like, it's it's pretty cool. Like, I was able to get this, like the download reimagining. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Ball, ball tech, ball tech is asshole, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, sorry, all right, I'll, I'll turn it off. I'll, I'll stop. I'll turn it off now. <laughs> oh shit! But um, but but, oh, but the thing is that I I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought for a normie show and the person who's never played the game, I thought it was actually pretty entertaining. Uh, now um, the thing is, it it felt is this supposed to be like Fallout? like 76 is it like fallout because i see you you know at the end you see new vegas so like i'm wondering like how it all ties together like i'm not sure like chronologically like where this show actually like goes i i don't know if i just watched before we went live i watched mudahar's take on the tv show uh i and if he's correct it's after Mm -hmm. all three games it's after three oh yeah and so yeah it's to answer your question, Lucy, Maximus, uh, Howard, these are all um, new characters. They're not from the existing games. These are all new characters. Okay. And yeah, like Lucy's from another vault. Like in Fallout 3, it's like your vault 101. In Fallout 4, your characters, vault, I forgot that you, you got all your, the main characters from all the Fallouts, you come from different vaults. Save uh, New Vegas. It's only New Vegas that you don't actually come from the vault. But uh yeah, it's it's a it's a new story, but it's people are having a gripe on the timeline because like it contradicts the timeline between New Vegas, especially mm-hmm. um uh it I'm 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure if one of the endings of because like in New Vegas there can be there can be so many endings for it that but the fact that they show in the ending of this show that it's um the the tower I forgot the name of the tower actually it's still standing the the uh the central hub of New Vegas is, is still around. Oh, I'm the stratosphere is, is is that it? Is, it is looks it like a stratosphere. Strat- I, I I I don't know. But yeah, like, yeah, but that, that's like a, that's 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 definitely an, an iconic location of New Vegas for sure. That, that's like you, you're gonna end up there eventually as you progress in the story. Yeah. But yeah, uh, overall, it's yeah. Pre- uh, I get what I'm in. If I want to be faithful to the the design, then the the design of the ghoul is too clean. But I I get why they opted for that direction. It's like they don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> they don't make it look too hideous for the general audience, so they had to clean them up a little bit. But that's yeah. not how a ghoul looks like in the games. It, it looks more um disgusting. If I was, it, it's like when you look. Oh, it's like. What do, why are you looking? What do you look like that? But yeah, yo, it's, it's Mrs. Sassy it's, Sasquatch is in the chat. I say, hey, hey, friends, yo, what's going no. on, Mrs. Sassy Sasquatch? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, we were able to meet her in person. Yeah, we got the uh, we got the uh, chat during uh, Jay's live stream on Christmas last year. So I uh, hope you're doing well and congratulations on the on the raffle, the raffle win. Uh, Cannoli Sasquatch was able to win something. But yo, hope you're doing well. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, so uh, c- continue, Gray. Just wanted to. Just wanted to make, make, make sure that she knows where we see her with my small eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, save all the woke stuff. It's for me. It's good. It's yeah. It's good for normies. But I can mm-hmm. understand why the frustration of the ultra hardcore. But I think the goal, the re- the intent was to bring more people in. That's why yeah. it's like, it, and it's like. I, I also like the direction that they they didn't shove too many stuff into the show right away. Because like there's so many types of beasts or mon- monstrosities in Fallout that weren't put in. This te- like I'm surprised there's no super mutants in there. No, no super mutants, no Meyer Lurks, no uh there, there's so many other and, and no Deathclaw. That's, that's one of the most iconic ones, iconic monsters. But yeah, they wanted to introduce people slowly, gradually to the wasteland mm-hmm. and how it works on the outside world like how vault dwellers have no idea what's going on outside and yeah Lucy's story is like oh shit it's it's so it's so shitty in here it's everyone's a piece of shit but yeah that, that's how it yeah. is <laughs> that, that's how that's how it really works in the wastelands like that's one of the things like um I my first game in the my first game in the fallout is fallout 3 as like um, it's my one of my actually first survival games. So I was not I'm I was so used to JRPGs back in the day, but Fallout is super, super different. So when you when you hmm. get oh shit, I I I need to save resources. Oh shit, I need to scavenge for uh materials. But then it yeah, it end up getting used to um the gameplay. It's, you, you, you end up being uh knowing how to be efficient with your resources, how to uh craft materials to make them useful for you. So I think mm-hmm. the move, the TV show kind of got that, especially with Lucy's story. But uh, in terms of the woke stuff, we can uh, we can talk about it as we progress in the episodes. So, yeah, what what do you think about episode uh, one? Let's start with episode one. Yeah, let's start chronologically. So basically, the first episode, uh, you see, uh, God, that the the cowboy dude forgot his actual human name or oh Cooper Cooper, uh, cowboy cowboy dude. Uh, doing um, what's it called again? He's at a party, right? Uh, he's at the party. Uh, he dresses a cowboy, and and, and um, I guess um, he's at this rich person's house. And then it sort of it sort of reminds me of like 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 uh like old timey what like fifties, like like fifties maybe around like like at least a timeline. But it's like like mixed in with like modern day technology in, in, in a way. So. You have that, and then they're hanging out, and then you see the the fucking uh, what's it called again? The bombs drop in the city, uh, the city, and uh, I think it's like maybe two, two, three cities far, uh, far out into the distance, and then the freaking uh, ripple effect of the explosion destroys them, and everyone starts freaking out, right? And I guess this guy has been alive for two hundred and nineteen years because it says two hundred and nineteen years later. So I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure how that works. Right, like, uh, like because when when the ghoul was released, like there was like some IV shit that was like plugged into his like casket from six feet under. So great, how how is he alive for that long? 
right? He wasn't frozen in time. That's the thing. Uh, ghouls have a very, very, very long lifespan. When you when you become a ghoul, you have a very, very long lifespan. But how did That's he become I mean. a ghoul, though? Uh, it it's it's depending on the level of exposure you, you have with the radiation and probably some with the mix it, some genetics mix in. So it's like okay. if yeah, it's like you're depend it depends depending on how much exposure you got from the bombs and your uh genetics. Like if if you survive the radiation and your skin begins to flake, that means yeah, you're becoming a ghoul. Then your lifespan is also increased exponentially. But the caveat hmm. is there's also the show also showed this in the later episodes. I forgot which one. They showed the mm. feral ghoul, the the ones that went crazy that attack anyone randomly on site. So it's it, like, it so yeah. like a zombie, right? Yeah, yeah. You call you call those feral ghouls. You, they go, um, yeah. They they're not. They lost their consciousness and they they just become yeah. They become like a zombie like state. So you you just kill those by default when you encounter those because like yeah, they're always gonna be hostile no matter what. So yeah, okay. that ghosts will always have a very very long lifespan. But my question is for that for for his story arc, like at the end of the TV show, like his goal is to find his family. But um, I, I don't know why, why is he assuming that his daughter and his wife became ghouls too. <laughs> I think they should be dead already if they are if they're not. But anyway, yeah. Well, but the thing is that like like we, we don't know what happened to Barb. I think that's her name. The the, the uh, it's funny yeah. it's because when you first see that the, the episode, you see the black daughter. It sort of reminds me of uh. I was like, oh, this this is what this is what they did with the Last of Us, right? It's like a, the the it the, the yeah, daughter is yeah. half it's, like, it's half black, and then the wife is full black, which is fine. Like I don't really care too much about it, yeah. but it is. I'm like, okay, you know, it's something that they in, yeah, injected, they're, right? They're, this show this show is really pushing a lot of that. I, I this, this is one of the criticisms of Synthetic Man. It's like they're push they're really pushing hard on the mix on the mix the mixed race dynamic. There, mm -hmm. There's like. Yeah, Cooper and his wife, and then Lucy and Maximus. They're really pushing the mixed race dynamic in this yeah. TV show. All right. So between all the characters, I guess all three main characters that you're following, you're following uh, Lucy, uh, which is the, the the girl from Vault Thirty Three. You're following the Ghoul, and you're following Maximus. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, what did you what did you think about um the the stories for them? But um, you know, I, I'm gonna go first since you you probably have more. Um, more um, backstory or at least more like uh, general ideas of like since you played the game um, out of all three of them I hated Maximus the most like he he's yeah. like he's like a fucking wish.com version of Do Jonathan Majors yeah. and just like dude he, he was I hated his character so much like everything that he got was not earned he sort of stole yeah. it Right in a yeah, way, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what happened to like the, the, the transgender Dane character. You go, as when I saw that transgender person, I'm like, oh, that's totally a girl, you know. <laughs> well, you already fully know the peach fuzz on your freaking lips, right? What is what it is, they, 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 they don't address that, but it's just like, oh, there's a character that you can tell automatically is like that's a trans person. Uh, and or you know, she, and then, um, what's it called again? You feel like you know, the part where she fucks up her leg, like, I guess she did it to herself, but. Uh, two dollar, two dollar Jonathan Majors, basically <laughs> like freaking steals the freaking knight. Uh, the, steals the armor, the T sixty, that he did not fucking earn. He gets his ass handed to him, and just and then at the end, he basically, basically, uh, oh, we're just gonna give him the fucking title, and like I'm, I, I just feel like okay, sure, this is so dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Lu I think both the characters of Lucy and Maximus um are the weakest. Um, in, in terms of the three character, I think the ghoul story is absolutely the best. Um, yeah, you it's you empathize with him the most, the, the all the shit that he's went through. But um, but overall, um, I yeah, I just I I, I hated budget Jonathan Majors. How how do you feel about <laughs> these characters? Yeah, yeah, I I definitely agree. Uh, and I feel that in was it episode episode two episode two when he was um going with the the real Titus. Mm -hmm. The real Titus, right? Oh wait, because I am looking at. Uh, okay, never mind. I am having a hard time seeing it. Uh, but there's uh, there's a that I think they kind of pushed it too far in episode two when Titus was shitting on Maximus. I think, yeah, I I, I get it. He's he's an asshole. Titus is an asshole, but he didn't really have to wait go in full unrealistically an asshole in my opinion. 
It's like he's injured mm-hmm. and dying, and the person who's about to save him is like he's still shitting, talking shit about him. I think that's a bit too far, even if you're pushing for the stereotypical evil white guy oppressing the black guy. <laughs> that's how I saw it. <laughs> right, right. It's like um, it's like if a lot of the white guys here are either um, either they're a genu- or uber villainy asshole or they're incredibly incompetent. A lot of them are. A lot of them are. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are, but uh, but yeah, it's like you're you're right about Maximus. E- even though he, he he does admit it to do so, yeah, I, I'm actually an asshole and incompetent. But but they just freak freak let it go anyway. And mm-hmm. like toward, I I don't, it's towards the end. Like he he gets the title, even though he he didn't really kill Moldaver, right? He didn't he didn't shoot Moldaver. It was no. It just like yeah, just... Dane. I, I I don't know. Like I, I'm not sure if Dane's like, oh, I want to have sex with you or something like that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh wish.com Jonathan Majors. But I, I I don't know. It's like I don't know why she's so nice to him. It's like basically giving him the the, the like her spot. Like it's a it's it's a, it's just a fucking female, all right. Like Dane is a female. Um, giving her spot uh to to him by like purposely sabotaging herself and then giving uh at, at the end it's like oh. It's like you killed her, yeah. You know, Knight Maximus, and just like it's so, it's so stupid. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so hey, it, I believe he just gets everything. Two, yeah, and then um, episode two. Uh, I, I okay, okay. Let's, let's let's stick back to episode one. I think that I think the what's it called again the the misdirection and the sort of like um, you know, Vault 31, 32, and thirty three are all linked, and how like uh, basically thirty two. Uh, it was actually raiders that came over and what vault 32 was actually like been gone for a long time. I thought that was a good twist. I'm not sure if it's like that in the games, if there's like some kind of like crazy shit that's happened between the vaults, you know, uh, is there something like that that happens in the game? No, no, no. Yeah. That's another major issue. It's like the vaults are definitely separated from one another in the games. It's just that for this TV show, they made it in such a way that the three are connect are somehow interconnected with one another. So for me, that's mm. really, really really weird. It's like if you were gonna inter interconnect three vaults, then why not just consider them as one vault? In, in my opinion, it's like I think it's, it it would have been better that way. They all just work simply work together. But and it, yeah, it's it's I find it weird that they just made it three, then they made it uh like I don't know, uh they made it three and then. They don't work together. They said they they trade with one another. I think it would have been more yeah. efficient if they just if they just all just work together. But yeah, because they they were. Here's the thing about probably the biggest slap in the face for this TV show is, it's another jab in capitalism apparently because like yes. Vault Tech is, yeah, Vault Tech is actually the bad guys. They they're doing it for profit. It's like no, nah, no, nah, that's not how it went down in the video games. It's like it's actually yeah because of like governmental um. Issues around the country. That's what the, that's what caused the bomb. It, it wasn't Vault Tech who dropped the bomb. It, it that's the most ridiculous part of the TV show. So like, yeah. Uh, but but for me, it's like the reason why I don't think that's a super super big deal. Because like for me, it's like like the person behind it, the person who instigated Vault Tech to drop the bomb, is the black woman. So it's like you can say that that's racist, right? It's it's the black woman <laughs> that, that instigated it. So like. In their quest to be super, in in their quest to be woke, they they kind of for me I felt like they became anti woke <laughs> because of that. Oh, it's the black woman who's actually the villain. Okay, okay. So it's it, in a way it's like it counters itself. It counters yeah. the intent. If it was like a a white giga chad male who did it, yeah, that, that was just, that's too much on the nose for the wokeness. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, yeah. And then uh, in the episode two, um, the dog and that scientist guy, I forgot his name already. Um, I thought the episode was pretty good. Uh, I, I, I like that one. Um, there wasn't a lot of talking, you know, like in the beginning, it's just like the story of uh, them testing on the, the, the dogs and stuff. And the thing is, how did he maybe I wasn't paying attention, but how he basically had access to cold fusion the entire time and he injected into his his neck? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, did he, he just hap were they like working on something and then they did, they did a major breakthrough? And then the scientist guy didn't want to give it to the Brotherhood. Is is, is it? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, that, that's another thing that people have an issue with. No, he was that lab that he was on in episode one and two. That was not the Brotherhood. That was the okay. enemy of the. That was the Enclave. 
that's the main antagonist okay. in in uh Fallout 3. So it's like they're I know they were former military before the bombs dropped. Then they formed their own group and called themselves the Enclave. So mm. he was trying to um once he discovered yeah, Cold Fusion, uh, aka unlimited energy, he didn't want to give it to Enclave because he knew that he was good they were gonna do it for nefarious reasons or for uh yeah, self-serving reasons compared to other factions. So he okay. yeah, he tried yeah, now that he, he injected it in his head, then he tried to get away, uh tried to send it to he wanted to to Moldaver because like apparently she had good intentions for it. She he 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 kind of he believes in Moldaver more than uh the Brotherhood, more than definitely not the Enclave. That's why he mm. he ran out and did what he did. So yeah, uh but um and yeah it's I just I suppose it's a good dynamic that he that dog meat is also there. But yeah, the, the, the thing with the Enclave is they kind of they're supposed to they're supposed to have fallen already during the time of Fallout 3. So again, it kind of contradicts to the timeline of the video games. But for me, I suppose Beth- Bethesda and Amazon wanted more um leeway, maybe if they wanted more Enclave in the future for future seasons. Yeah, I, I mm-hmm. just treat it se- I, I treat the TV show and the game separately. Even though Todd Howard's, oh, it's canon, it's canon. For me, it's for me, it's I just treat it as a separate thing. The TV show and the video games are as a separate thing, even though they say that it's canon. Uh okay. yeah, for me. That that's how I view it. That's why I I'm kind of more generous in the Fallout TV show. For me, it's like as long as it brings more people in to the fall, I see that as a win. It's like I don't see I don't see a reason why you should gatekeep people. So, oh, you gotta follow the video games. Like if if this alternate universe TV show can bring more people in, then I don't see why that how oh, that's not a good thing. I, I could be yeah. wrong, but that's how that's how I see it. So um what are your thoughts on the what's it called again? The uh <laughs> what are your thoughts on the part where uh the ghoul captures uh uh what's it called again? Um a Lucy and then you know brings her to the supermarket and then there's those two guys and then th- that robot in there. Like, wh- what are your thoughts? Is that something that's in the game as well? Where like there's a, where you can go there and like, uh, you know, cash in your, like your human people. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh no, no, those are the people in the super duper mart are raiders. The same kind of people that attacked the vault in episode one. They're, oh, okay. they're, they're, they're just a bunch of people who are 100% self-serving. They're, they're gonna pillage. They're gonna kill. They're gonna enslave. They're gonna rape just for themselves. That's a ra- That's the, that's basically a raider and just. So that's just another group of raiders in the supermarket. And that the robot, the robot that tried to cut her organs out, Lucy. That's depending on. Uh, in fo- in the in the video games, there's there are good guys. You can even get one as an ally. You can get a bunch of them as an ally, or you can mm. have one as a butler. You can have one as, or for more evil self serving purposes. So. The, those robots are 100% in the games, but it depending on their programming if they go rogue, if they go evil, or if they're actually good guys. So I think that mm-hmm. it's a it's a I just find it weird that like he gave Lucy a finger, then it's oh, but I'm gonna cut your organs anyway. So what was the yeah. point of giving her a new finger? <laughs> that, that's that's kind of the weird part for me. That, yeah. yeah, and then uh, so it is so to keep um yeah, uh, uh Satan brought it up. Um so in order for you to keep not turning into the the the, the pharaoh ghouls. You have do you have to suck that uh, that that that's yeah. The I, I, no, no, I I don't agree. I don't recall ghouls having needing to. As far as I know, you don't need to. Uh, what you call this? Keep chugging that. Uh, whatever you call that. I, I don't know what that medicine is. Part. I know what a stim pack is. I know what a radaway is, but I don't know what that thing that uh the ghoul the ghoul character maybe is called like. Ghoul away or something. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, man. It's like it, it basically looks like 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 some kind of like vile thing he just inhales, and like they had a yeah. bunch of them, and I I don't know why they added that. Like like to be honest, it's it's not really that. Um, like you could just have the ghouls just be regular ghouls instead of them turning into, like t- like turning into a, a an actual uh, uh, pharaoh ghoul if he doesn't take those those serum models uh, from the vials. So just yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't elaborate on it. It's just uh, something yeah, that, that he needs. 
Yeah, that, that's why it's like I feel like the show is even though Todd or App, I don't care if they say it's canon because like I just treat it as a separate entity. It's like they wanted to add that stake probably for Cooper. Like since they knew they know that a lot of people are gonna like Cooper, so it's like they wanted to have him this encumbrance of oh I need to keep drinking these medicine or else I'm gonna turn I'm gonna change. I think that's what mm. they wanted to go for for future seasons, but which is definitely not part of the lore of the video games. I think they that's why I, the TV show should be a separate thing. So okay. I, I I can imagine like towards the end of the C, the TV show itself, like. Oh, I only have so little left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn. I think that's what they're going for towards the end of the TV show. Yeah. When so J yeah. uh, J fifty two says that isn't he taking Jet? And Jet is a flawless version of meth. It also slows down time for the user. Do you think that's? Do you think that's what he's taking? Uh, for me, it's something else because like it, he doesn't need to take a Jet for him to be really good in fight in shooting in in my opinion it maybe it's something else i i don't know maybe mm -hmm. maybe it actually is Ch chat can correct me on that but i feel like it's something else uh but yeah oh episode one it's yeah what what did we miss anything else in episode one? Oh well uh, oh yeah yeah that the sex scene in episode one is and that's completely unnecessary with the white <laughs> the white guy oh yeah that, that the white raider he was like yeah, he's yeah. just like yeah, that, that that was weird. It's, it's so like I'm assuming like these interconnected vaults. And okay, so we're gonna jump. I'm gonna jump ahead. So mm -hmm. the part where um where Cooper was basically uh, eavesdropping on his wife, uh, working for Vault Tech, and uh when they're in that room, right? That that the secret room, and everyone was just you know the world uh the world's leader talking about how to like uh you know sell Vault Tech and shit like that to how to market it in, in a capitalistic way. Um, I think all of them had their own versions of like, what they would do with Vault Tech if they had one, right? So maybe um the one that's for um uh buds buds, right? I'm not sure that's that that's in that's in the game, but like what he did was what Vault uh 31, 32, 33 is. Vault 4 is the original one, and then maybe like Vault 101 or 102 is like another one that um you know brings in all of the illegal immigrants and make him do shit and then one of them is like i remove all the kids parents and have the kids survive right i'm assuming that's what they did right? uh well it in the video games like um what made the video games interesting is that example you're, like it's it's a super super big it's open world bethesda is the pioneer mm -hmm. of that it's like you're exploring around you find a vault a part of what exploring a vault intriguing is you don't know what's behind it. You don't know if the vault is still existing. You don't know if the vault is already dead. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's more of like a, a political woke play for the TV show to say that oh, each vault can experiment on their own, can can do whatever the fuck they want with humans. It's more of like a woke mm -hmm. thing, in my opinion. Because like part of what makes the vault one of the fun things about exploring a vault in the video games, like to see the story behind it. It's like, oh, why did this fault die? How did it how did it not survive? Turns out like some uh experiment got gone wrong or um raiders came in, etc. Or it's still alive, but with caveats, blah 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 blah. That's the fun thing about exploring in the Fallout universe in the video games. Here they kind of like politicize it. Can I they kind of like yeah, admittedly, they kind of went more of the woke elements like. Oh, people can abuse here. Oh, you can abuse illegal immigrants. Yeah, they inserted woke stuff for sure. In terms of the in terms of the vault tech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. So um let's let's move on. Um uh let's see. Uh did you okay, yeah, yeah, I do agree with you. The first four episodes was sort of slow, right? It's like, oh, um, I lost the head, I need to go find the head. A sea creature took the head, and then uh What's it called again? Uh, Maximus was able to retrieve the head by killing that sea creature, and I guess that sea creature is a mutated human. Yeah, right? that, I'm not sure if that's an act. That's the actual origin story of the gulper. You don't really encounter. Well, it, me, I don't really. I never really encountered a lot of those in the in the video games. So, uh, I think the origin story is human experimentation. I, I'm not sure. Chat can. Uh, can correct me, but 
That was um uh, because according it, that was Vault Four's level twelve. Remember, you can't go to level twelve is because all of these people are being like, like that's why everyone in Vault Four are like not everyone like half the people in Vault Four are like they look like mutants is because of the radiation. I'm not I'm not sure right like what like the um, the overseer had like one eye. He's like literally a cyclops. So one person has like an extra extra nose, an extra ear, or like an extra penis or something like that. So they can do DP just with one person. But the thing is. Like how they said it was like, oh, this is due to radiation or some shit like that. But like it, it's I, I, it's funny because I feel like Vault Four is like most humane. Like Vault Four is actually really nice compared to all the other fucking vaults. Like, uh, he, he, yeah, uh, yeah, I. No, that they were saying at first it was the radiation until Lucy went to the twelfth floor, right? Like it's, it was mm. actually because of their experimentation why they became the way they are. So, yeah, it's 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 another. I, the part that I found weird in that episode is when they went, <laughs> they they the worshiping part of Maldiver. <laughs> oh yeah, where like they all turn yeah. naked. I'm like, yeah, it's like weird. Like, what, like what, what, it's cool when you see you like, the hot girls naked. Yeah, it's like it's it's good when you see the hot girls naked, but when you see the. F- the fat old ladies <laughs> naked, like, all right, I don't need to see this anymore. <laughs> <I'm here." laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this yeah, show has a lot of it, this, yeah this show has a lot of weird quirk, quirks in it but I think it's by design it's like they uh intentionally show how disgusting humanity can be I, I think that's what they were gunning for but I, I, mm-hmm. I don't it's so weird that they perceive Moldaver in that sense like they, it it kind of let it's kind of like um worshipping kind of like a theme tackled in The Last of Us Part 2 but yeah, and also, yeah, Titus was kind of a dipshit in that episode too. Yeah, Ty- uh, mm-hmm. Maximus is not really a, a good character. Oh, no, he's maybe they get awful, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll try to fix they'll try to fix him in season two. But yeah, he's he's definitely the weakest link out of all the main characters. To be honest, I actually like his squire better, Thaddeus. Actually, he has more personality and more character, and it makes sense is because like what he did, of course, like. To be honest, I thought that they're gonna like Maximus was gonna get fucked in any in, in any way or form, but like all of a sudden Lucy finds him when he gets trapped in his armor. I'm like, oh, that's so coincidental, right? Yeah. What are yeah. the chances, right? Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I I I did like Thaddeus. What, what did you like Thaddeus, his squire? Yeah, yeah. I I like the I like the part where that's the first for me with how he became a ghoul. Like I didn't know that there, there was this concentrated substance or or medicine that can can actually turn you to a ghoul. I, I I think that's a first. I'm not sure if that was part of the games. It's like you can turn into a ghoul that way. All I know is you can turn to a ghoul because of the exposed radiation, and depends on yeah. your genetics. So so what happened was um Th- um Thaddeus basically was uh basically was the new squire um that was sent to serve um Knight Titus because uh Maximus let the actual original Knight Titus die uh, after being uh uh basically mauled in in a way and he was ble- basically uh bleeding out from a radiated bear. So uh he usurps the knights uh the, the Knight Titus's armor. And basically pretends to be Knight Titus the entire time. And then uh, in Philly, which is a small shitty town, they drop in a squire and a squire basically works for him. Um, he's like, uh, you know, um, you know, he's super like high energy, you know, like he's super positive guy, loves his job. And then like they're both fucking drunk one night and it's like, I want you to brand me. I want you to brand my dick. And then he's like, are you, are, are you sure? It actually hurts. Just do it, man. Just do it. Brand my dick. So then he freaking brands him. Right, and it basically touched tips, and then he's like, "All right, cool. I'm gonna tell him my secret now." And then it's like, <laughs> because he thought that he was gonna like, "Oh, cool. You know, it is what it is." And he's like, "No, bitch. Like, you fucking betrayed the brotherhood and fucking um, pretended that you were Titus for a long time." So then, uh, like, he basically they, they sort of go into a, a scuffle, and he steps on his foot, and his foot gets fucked up. So he, you know, his foot basically looks like his toes are falling apart. And um, right before he escapes, like he takes his um what's it called again that 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 power core whatever what was that called again fusion core 
fusion car, fusion car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fusion car. He steals the fusion car. He he freaking grabs the, the the head with the code fusion, walks it with limps away, and um goes into like a fucking desert with this guy who fucks chickens. <laughs> this guy who fucks chickens was like, I'm a doctor, I can heal your foot. And he literally like gave him something to drink, right? Made some this it was gonna taste really awful. And then he basically like his foot just like fucking healed up, like um. Uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I thought that to be weird, but I felt very, you know, comedic, especially like the part like where he sees a uh, Fred Armisen from SNL. Like, he's like, oh, I really like this uh, this country music. And then he gets shot with an arrow through his neck and he find out that yeah. that shit turned him into a ghoul, which is I don't know. So I'm assuming Thaddeus will probably play a big part later. Right. Since, yeah. Like, he, yeah. He, he can't die he, now. Right. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. They're really back, uh, it putting heavy emphasis on the ghoul story, like how mm -hmm. I don't know how much they changed, but uh, yeah, it's gonna play a bigger role in the incoming seasons for sure. Like they're gonna, I'm just worried that they bank too much on it. It's like oh, ghouls are they have a really long lifespan. Oh, ghouls need whatever medicine it is they're taking to stay, stay alive. I, mm -hmm. I, it's like the Fallout universe is a lot bigger. They, they they can't they don't need to just lean towards the ghoul the ghouls and stuff, but uh what what else? Yeah, that that's about it from for for Thaddeus, right? When he when he found out it was actually Maximus, so, so like, he, yeah, it's like it's even though Titus was kind of a dick to Maximus, like it's yeah, it's no excuse for what he did. I guess. You, you just left him to die. You left your superior to die, even though he was still being an asshole to the very end. But yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. yeah. I actually like the part where uh, Maximus was like, because he he's so untrained in using the armor. Because yeah, you really need training to be able to use the power armor. So there are a lot of stuff that he didn't know, like how mm -hmm. um how Cooper managed to outwit him, even though he's on an armor because he didn't know how to use the armor properly, and that. Yeah. Yeah, Thaddeus knows that. Oh, if I pull his fusion core, it'll stop. He'll stop functioning to the point that he can't even get out of the armor. Yeah, I, I like that dynamic. It's like I like that uh, nuance to the power armor and how inexperience can actually be more detrimental to people who don't know how to use it compared to people yeah. who actually know how the power armor works. Yeah, yeah. So G G yeah, JJ fifty two says uh, Rappaport was funny and uh, unexpected. Yeah. So uh, Michael Rappaport is the guy who played the original Night Titus. Uh, it's funny because he was the guy who said Pig Dick Donald Trump. Yo, we're gonna vote for Pig Dick Donald Trump. So that's the guy. If you guys don't know who he is, and it's funny because uh, like I, I was like that looks like Michael Rappaport. I'm not sure if it's him, but it is him. So it's actually pretty funny. He played it. He played an asshole because he, he's good at playing assholes. But um, uh, I I think overall the in the entire story with um the, the buds buds thing was sort of i don't know like it's supposed to for me it was supposed to like i feel like it's supposed it was supposed to have more impact but i didn't care too much it's like oh yeah he just crowd drainly froze himself and basically made him that like so they can sort of control like all these vaults and uh, and, and you sort of see this the, the story coming from a mile, uh, at, at least at the, some of the twists, you see it coming from a mile away. Like, uh, no, like, like, uh, Henry is actually Hank. Like, that, I, I, I saw that. Uh, I was like, okay, who the fuck is Henry? And then it's like, oh, he wants to meet you. I'm like, I guarantee you it's a dad, right? And it is, right? It's like, how, how has he been aligned for this long? And because he froze, uh, it's he's basically froze himself, right? Yeah, like, that was, like, yeah, 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 that's that's the. There, yeah, there's such a thing as cryo. That's a that's the premise of Fallout Four. Like, if you okay. um, Fallout Four plays heavily, heavily on the cryo dynamics. Like, uh, yeah, I can say what happens in Fallout Four, but it's gonna be super heavy spoilers. They, they really mm -hmm. backed heavily on the cry on the cryo dynamic in Fallout Four. But yeah, that they for some um for some of the vault dwellers like. They uh, froze themselves in for a very, very long time. But by the time that they woke up, already it's like 60 years, maybe 100 years have already passed since then. Mm -hmm. So that's how they, they, still, they still stay alive after all this time. They went into cryosleep. Yeah. 
like okay so so right over here J jj52 says that like nobody has sent lucy she left on her own accord uh she isn't a girl boss either see the thing is that like when she was being interviewed to do the to, to being exchanged for like uh for, for for you know being offered like it sounded like she was a badass it's funny is because once she got out to the real world she, she was she was getting decked on all the time because she, maybe like she like she doesn't know how the real world works or anything like that but i felt like oh i know how to you know i'm a marksman i like i know how to do like brazilian jiu-jitsu i'm real, uh, but like when she goes onto the real world she, she doesn't know how to do anything which i thought was yeah. pretty funny but um but overall i uh i think i think i like the dog more than lucy and max <laughs> <laughs> i felt more for the dog than lucy and max uh, man but but i was like yeah, yeah, I like the part in episode two when I thought Cooper killed dog meat, but he just nuzzled him, right? <laughs> he, they made it look like he, the dog died. Like he, he pulled out his knife. Like, he, he yeah. Thought, he thought, he, I thought, I legitimately thought he, dog meat, they were going to kill off dog meat really early. He was like, oh, no, next, oh, he actually spared him. <laughs> it's like, I, I was going to yeah. say, oh, wow, that's a lot of balls to kill dog meat that, to actually kill dog meat and that early. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually thought that he, uh, he died. So yeah. I'm like, holy shit. So um let's see. Uh what are your thoughts on uh what's it called again? Like uh like Moldaver. Like uh is that is that character in the game? Because like that this nah, character was huge. Nah, that's definitely a woke thing. Admittedly, it's like I mean, look at her look at her physical features and look at her position in the story. It's like, oh I'm I'm such a bad I'm the one who actually tried to make a living and thriving city. And I, I went after your dad because he's the he's the evil white bad guy who actually started <laughs> yeah made, made things to shit when we were doing so we were doing so well so yeah that's one hundred percent the woke things like in Fallout Three you also go after your dad but the mm -hmm. thing is your dad was an actual good guy not not the way they portrayed it here where he was oh he made it's, he he seems like a good guy but is actually the evil bad guy. no in Fallout Three he's actually a good guy he really wanted to make the world a better place. Uh, spoiler alert for Fallout 3. <laughs> spoiler alert for a really, really old game. But so yeah. Um so how how okay, so Moldaver is cryogenically frozen as well, then. Like that that's why she's been around for this long. Mm. Right? Was how, she how, like I, I don't know. It's if the like was she it's because she was against Voltec, right? And she's against Voltec. How did she survive? 200 something years like was that explained wait uh was she frozen too that that's i know yeah the dad was i know but um but i think cloned maybe uh frozen for sure we just don't know where yeah it's because like she's been a alive for as long yeah, as that that, uh, that that part is not clear that part is not if she was actually frozen or like the she encountered the dad after the dad woke up already. That's the part I'm not sure of. But I think she was frozen. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I think she was frozen too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like 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 for me, like it the thing is that it doesn't really matter now is that she's dead. Like, you know, like she, yeah, she, yeah. she, she dies at the end of the uh, a, 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 a episode eight. So it doesn't really matter her backstory. So so this is sort of like a like like sort of like her backstory wasn't fully written out. And the thing is, now, uh, of course, it's, uh, I guess it's sort of like, I, I guess, a twist at the end. That ghoul that she was sitting with on the table at the end, like, uh, at, at episode eight, that was uh, Lucy's mom. So is she, like, a full-on ghoul? Or is she just, like, a fucking, wa like, a walking corpse? Like, I... She became, she became feral, the way I see it. Like, it's because of the dad's bombing of um, the... Shady Sands, she became mm -hmm. a ghoul. That, that's what they're trying to drive us. Like, oh, look, it's the evil white guy. <laughs> look at him. He's so bad. Look what happened to your mom. That, that's what they were going for. That, that's all there is. Like, the mom is, became the symbol of that, of the beat of the evil. Like, it kind of highlights how evil the dad actually is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, okay. I, now, I, did, did, you like, uh, did you like the actor that played uh, the dad, Hank, uh, Kyle McLaughlin? Like, he's a pretty well-known actor. Yeah, he was in Yeah, Dune. yeah. I, uh, the I, first I movie tell. I saw him in was... Uh... 
the first movie I saw Kyle McLaughlin in was uh, Showgirls with uh, Elizabeth Berkley. <laughs> <laughs> he was the rich, handsome man. But yeah, uh, what did you think about uh, uh, the actor that played yeah, I, him? I, I, think, character? I think he was okay. I think he was, uh, what do you call this? Yeah, he played. I mean, I he, I already know he was gonna go. They were gonna go for a woke char- white character, so woke character shitting on white people. So he played the he played the character well. It's just that he, I mean, he had no choice. He had to he had to play the he had to play the role. So he he played it well. So I'm looking forward to what he, what he will be. Uh, what do you call this? What he will be doing in season two. But I, I, I just find it weird that. Um, he managed to put on a ran a random brotherhood suit and go all the way to Vegas with it. <laughs> but like, how do you? Yeah. How how was it even well maintained? Like, was the fusion core battery full? What was the was the water tank full? It's like, how could? Conv- yeah. So I find I just find it too convenient for him that he, g- so he gets to all the way to Vegas unscathed. Yeah. So. so- my my thoughts exactly is because uh, so so uh, geographically, the Griffith Park Observatory is in Hall. It's like in Bur- the 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 Burbank uh, Hollywood Hills area, right? From there all the way to Vegas, which is I'm assuming this is the actual Vegas, uh, which they call New Vegas, is about 230 miles away. So did he fly all the way over there? Right? Yeah. He, or like- did he walk all the way over there? Because if he walked. Auto over there it would probably take him like several days, right? Just to walk. So if he was actually yeah. fl- if he flew over there, the fusion core battery seems to last a lot longer in the show. Yeah, if he actually flew auto over there, I'm like, god damn, man. And- yeah, it's like that's like fusion yeah. cores do not last that long. I mean, in the video game, you gotta keep in Fallout 4, you have to keep swapping them, you have to keep putting them on from time to time. That from yeah. there all the way to Vegas, it's like he, he just made it with one fusion core. And unscathed, like it. It looks like he didn't encounter any uh, post-apocalyptic monsters. So it, it's yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. That part is a bit yeah, of so, a stretch for me. So, uh, so basically, what happened at uh, near the end? You find out that um, you know the ghouls, uh, you know Cooper's wife is basically the bad guy, and uh, Bud's Bud's ties into um, Lucy's brother getting trapped in Vault Thirty One. And it, I thought that was pretty funny when he goes into the vault, and the only thing that's protecting the vault is a tiny brain on a. It just says "brain yeah. on a Roomba." That's the actual yeah. like name for the <laughs> character. Wait, before that, it's a "Yo, Tom, Rogue Attraction." How's it going, man? Howdy. Hope you're doing well, dude. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, but yeah, I I thought that was hilarious. It's just like ro- uh, "brain on a Roomba." It's like, wait, don't go in there. You'll see everything. Oh, he's gonna see everything, and he's like, "Don't move!" And his little needle comes out. He's like, Zzz. "Yeah, that, that's the thing." I, 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 I'm more of the. I do not approve the story arc of Lucy. Nor what's what's his name? Norman? No, uh, the little brother. Is it Norm? Norm yeah, it? Norm. Norm. Yeah, it's like. I find it too slow. His entire story arc is too slow. Like. Slowly discovering what's going on in the vaults. It, I felt like it's. It wasn't even clear what they were gunning for in that subplot for the other vaults. It's like, yeah, yeah so, so maybe some history. Maybe happened. they're gonna. They're definitely gonna have to explain it in um. In season two, which we wish there will be yeah. because I I, uh, overall I think the sentiments for this TV show is, is positive. It's not. You no, know, highly praised, but it's, it's it's positive, right? It's not bad. I like yeah. from a person who has never played any of the video games. I I, was, I thought that it was inter- uh, entertaining, right? Yeah. And like I was watching my um, uh, my cousin, he was watching it. Like he was watching the last two episodes, and during this time, I already watched it. And they asked him, I was like, "Did you play the game?" He's like, "Yeah, I played the game." I was like, "Are any of these characters in the game?" He's like, "No." Like they're just like random characters, but there are like there are ghouls. There are a bunch of other other characters in the game like this character, but there's not like a natural Lucy, an actual Maximus. So, um, what are your thoughts on uh, what's it called again? Like, what's gonna happen next? Like new, like a uh, is new New Vegas? Is that gonna be something awesome? Do you think that uh, be, because the New Vegas video game was that good? Was it like 
I'm not sure mm, if, uh, yeah, if yeah. which it's, fallout it, like where it it's is. the most it's it's the most highly revered one, New Vegas. Like if you check the polls that I made, it's like there, there's a reason why in the first poll I didn't put New Vegas because I know New Vegas is gonna win. Like, <laughs> well, absolutely, 100 percent is gonna win. It's like uh I just wanted to see it's like what do actually people think between Fallout 3 and Fallout 4? It's like I I thought three was a lot better, but yeah, I thought I thought I was in the minority. Turns out I I was part of the majority. Three is a lot better than four. It's like Four focused too much on the like the gun customization, the settlement building, which I'm not really it's not really a big deal for me. They, then they mm. really, really they really dumbed down the dialogue system, which that's the part I got upset. Like they dumbed down the dialogue. So in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, there's so many options to choose from how to talk to a particular NPC or how to change the outcome of the conversation. That, that's the that's the really cool part about three and New Vegas. But they, they killed that in four. For some reason, yeah. they dumped it down in four. Yo, Lord Bother with the nine ninety nine says the one thing purists have a problem with the series is that Shady Sands get destroyed years before New Vegas happens, basically decanonizing the most popular game. So is that true? Because I did hear that a lot of people didn't like what they did with like something that ties into New Vegas. Because I I, I have no idea what the guys, what the hell you guys are talking about. But is this true? Uh, the, the thing with Shady Sands and NCR is like, okay, I admit I don't know what's a NCR. Lot. What, what is that? New California Republic. It's kind of implied okay, okay. in the TV show. New California. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think I, there's a. I, yeah, Shady I Sands becomes like the capital, right? I think Moldaver is a part of it somewhat, actually, but she's not. A, she's definitely not part of the bigger body of NCR, if ever. But uh. Yeah, the reason why I don't know NCR a lot is because I finished New Vegas twice, and both times I did not side with the NCR. What <laughs> what one is, one is I sided with Mr. House, the guy um the guy who controls the casinos, and the guy who has control of a lot of cyberbots. If you give him the platinum chip in New Vegas, and so this- now here's the here's the thing though um. I remember one of the guys that was in the end uh, in episode eight when they're all doing the round table thing. One of them was talking about robots. Is that guy uh the that's Rob a, the, CEO? Rob is he Co- supposed to be like a, a person of him? Like a version of him? He he's the one who manufactures the robots. But hmm. I think he's also working with Mr. House because Mr. House has like an army of cyber of uber powerful robots. Like but he need that is a plot of it's kind of a spoiler for New Vegas. He needs a platinum chip that you need to retrieve throughout the story. It's like you have the option to give it to him so that he can activate this army of bots so that he can dominate New Vegas. So that's one of the one of the story arcs that you can go for. Uh but yeah, it I think if you side with the NCR in New Vegas, you you will explore a lot of a lot about Shady Sands, which I never got the opportunity. Maybe I should. Maybe she, maybe I should do another run of New Vegas and side with NCR so that I know about Shady Sands more. But yeah, yeah. I didn't get I didn't get to play um, NCR. I didn't side with NCR. That's why I don't know about the plot about. Oh, it was them who fa- who, who who returned civilization back to Shady Sands. So that's why it, it it I didn't catch on. Admittedly, when I was watching the TV show, that oh wait, that's that's a it, that's an extreme violation of the Fallout lore. But yeah, I I can hmm. see why people are upset. Like I can see why, but I am pretty sure in season two, NCR will bring back NCR. Like there can't be a new Vegas. There can't be a new Vegas plot without NCR, without Caesar's Legion, without some. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting with Caesar's Legion. How how they're gonna wokeify Caesar? Because like Caesar <laughs> Legion, because they're like they're literally straight up bad guys. Like oh, it's like you survive in this world by being extremely. Um, you have to be strong and ruthless. So it's like they're pro slavery. They're to that they're they're that evil they're that kind of evil faction like yeah we bring in the slaves like females are lower than us and stuff like that you, you know you know the type so it's yeah. season two is gonna be interesting for sure yo but thank you so much for the the 9.99 and it drops another one with 4.99 says from lord bother says uh i think todd wanted specifically to decanonize new vegas because obsidian made new vegas not bethesda and he petty about it being the most <laughs> popular <laughs> that, that's funny yeah Bethes- bethesda made fallout 3 then they outsourced new vegas to uh obsidian then yeah new because like ah. new vegas had 
New Vegas has so much. They they really double down on the RPG elements. That's why it's so good. And the numerous factions in the game. It's like imagine this in in New Vegas. Like examples like in New Vegas, like, NCR and the Brotherhood. They're also enemies. They're also fighting against each other. Imagine like if you go in the middle of an NCR base, and then you put on a Brotherhood armor. They're gonna think you're the enemy. Oh shit! It's the Brotherhood. Then they're gonna shoot you. That's how <laughs> that's how deep they're leaning onto the RPG elements for New Vegas. Hmm. Okay. So basically, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the episode, um, they they were able to get the head to um uh Moldaver. Moldaver basically um sucks out the 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 code fusion and basically it powers uh a Los Angeles. All right. Basically, the uh, the entire Los Angeles starts lighting up again, hmm. and then um he tells a story that like your dad was uh buds buds basically like a frozen dude, and um the son Norm. Gets stuck in uh, Vault Thirty One. The brain on a Roomba doesn't let him. Yeah, it, it's it, it's so that's that's the thing. I that's the baffling part about Nor Nor. Sorry. Like he gets to go to all these places with zero security. Like that's so counterintuitive to the Fallout. In the Fallout game, at the start of the game, you have to fight your way against against loads and loads of security guards to make it out of the vault. Because like. The, the overseer wants you dead, so you have to fight all the security guards. <laughs> Here it's like not a single security guard bothers to stop Norm. That I find that really, really weird. For an overseer, Betty, like, right? They're framing Betty to be like, oh, mm -hmm. she's a schemer. She's she has a lot of schemes behind the scenes. And she has zero security. That that's so counterintuitive, in my opinion. If you would think that for a scheming overseer, she'd have like a ton of okay no one sees this no one sees that you, you got to bring in bring in a lot of security for that but for some reason she's it's so like norm can just run around wherever he wants that, that's the yeah. that's the part where i find norm's story arc very off yeah it's a uh, it's i i thought that norm yeah norm was norm and his cousin uh wanted to basically go around and do shit like and uh, it's they, they they weren't able to uh, they were able to basically do it maybe because Betty's an old lady <laughs> I, I don't know, but yo Tatsusama with the ten gifted memberships holy crap man thank you thank you holy crap thank you Tatsusama for the ten member uh ten gifted memberships thank you thank you so much uh like like I said guys you you, you guys you guys are too kind you are getting a lot of uh uh was across the port tonight um but thank you thank you for that uh, I appreciate it you guys just hang out and just watch but if you guys do happen to give memberships. Make sure you guys hit enable so you guys can receive memberships from people who uh, do go uh, basically gift memberships out to the channel. But thank you so much, Tatsusama, for the 10 gifted. Thank you. Thank you. But um, yeah, so basically after that, uh, Norm Norm basically gets a fucking shitty ass ending for, for season one. He gets stuck yeah. in there. Uh, he's like, oh, you got to go into your dad's pod. You know, that's the best thing you can do. Maybe, you know, we got to wait 100, 200 years and then let's see what happens. And and then uh, Lu uh, Lucy hears a backstory, and then you also know that, that they're all interconnected. Uh, Moldaver uh, is in interconnected with um, uh, the ghoul, which is Cooper. And then uh, they end up basically uh, the dad ends up like escaping, right after getting like basically mm -hmm. grazed in the face with a bullet. All of a sudden, he runs out of ammo, uh, which which is you know good perfect timing. L leaves him alone, so he flies away, and then for some reason gets to New Vegas the next day. <laughs> and yeah, she is like, let's you know it's you know it's better for for us to see where your dad goes, so, so you see who's actually behind everything that's been going on. So it's like, all right, cool. And then she uh, ends up killing the ghoul that is her mom, and she leaves. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then with the whole thing with the new Vegas stuff, which is I heard everyone's super excited for. Um, who is is it? Was it well, someone mentioned it in chat? Is it like Robert House? Who is that? Yeah, that's um, he's a major character in the video game. It's like, um, okay, yeah, because like, uh, in, in New Vegas in particular, um, yeah, he was in part of that CEO meeting, right, with Barbara, and I forgot, I forgot the, the guy beside her. <laughs> Yeah, Hank, Bud. The, what's the name of the guy again? Yeah, Bud. I think it's Bud. Bud. Like, yeah, he's yeah, Bud. Yeah. So, yeah, in New Vegas, he becomes kind of like the brain, the liquid brain, because like because a lot of time has passed, so his body deteriorated, deteriorated. So he had to find a way to stay alive. 
So he's kind of like like that in New Vegas, but he controls a lot of the systems in New Vegas. So yeah, so in New Vegas, you get the option to side with him, which is what I did in uh in in one of my playthroughs in New Vegas. But yeah, oh, not, how a nice is this dude with the mustache. He looks like Tony Stark. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's gonna play a major. He's gonna play a major role in season two for sure. I, I I'm pretty sure he's gonna stick. He's gonna be in a tank. He's all his body's deteriorated, but he controls a lot of robots. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the thing. And yeah, I I, I also find it weird that uh, Lucy. Well, then again, it's like Lucy and uh, what Ed Cooper just left the cold fusion machine, so they trust yeah. the Brotherhood. Yeah, right. I find it weird. It's like so you're just gonna trust the Brotherhood to. You entrust this much power to the Brotherhood. I mean, I, I, maybe they would. Well, if they take it, come to think of it, if they take it, the Brotherhood's going to go after them. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on that part. Like they just left there so conveniently for the Brotherhood to take. Anyway. Yeah, it's just like code fusion things, uh, unlimited power, basically powering yeah. LA. It's funny yeah. it's because um, uh, at, at the end of episode eight, LA, uh, LA looks like a piece of shit. That's how it looks like right now. <laughs> Who, that's sorry? how LA looks like. That's how. Oh that's yeah. How LA looks like right now. <laughs> yeah, the, the the amount yeah. of homeless people that's hanging out, uh, uh hanging in uh in LA and how shitty that city is right now. Yeah. So basically, at the at episode eight, how uh you see LA when it's being powered up. That's how LA looks like right now. But yes. Um. But overall, um, does this make me want to play the game? Right. And this and I'm I'm interested now. I'm fairly interested because um it seems like the story is a little bit more like not so convoluted. Like this one, everything has to be tied together yeah, yeah. into one that, that, that's, that, major story arc. That's why I am not as upset as a lot of the hardcore fans. Because honestly, I didn't do a deep, 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 deep dive to the lore of Fallout. Because like whenever you play a Bethesda game casually, or if you're a if you're getting into a Bethesda game as a normie. It's like you don't really feel the super in-depthness of the story. It's like you don't play a Bethesda game for that in-depth story feel. It's like you play like you you soak in the the difficulty of post-apocalyptic life. You encounter all these different monsters. So the key is kind of like survivability more than the story mm -hmm. as a whole, in my opinion. That's that's why I, I'm not so upset. Compared to all the other people who really, really know the story of Fallout, but it's, it's the same thing with Elder Scrolls. Like you don't really play at Elder Scrolls to for the story. It's like it's getting to know the people and the world, but not really how in depth the lore is compared to let's say like The Witcher. Yeah, like The Witcher has a very good story, right? Yeah. But uh, now, um, overall, what you give the show? Like, would you recommend it to people? Like, what would you get from like one out of ten? And um, do you think that? Do you think the show will it, it's is good enough where it will draw people like me to play the game? Yeah, like for me, I'm pretty sure that was the goal of the TV show, and because of that, I'd give it like a solid seven and a half to eight. Because like, okay. yeah, yeah, I get, I get the. Oh shit, they really butchered the story. Oh shit, there's so much woke elements to it. But at the end of the day, it appeals to the general audience, which for me is a win. If you bring in more people to a it's always a win if you bring in more people to a franchise rather than gatekeeping, oh, this is only for smart people, this is only for this X people. I, I don't I think it's it's more of a good thing to bring people into a franchise. I'm sure, mm -hmm. I'm sure Fallout had a boost in sales. Yeah, it, and as for which game I recommend, which which of the Bethesda, it really depends. Like, do you prefer the shooting elements in the settlement building? If yes, then Fallout 4. If you prefer the deep dialogue options or the flexibility of the gameplay, I would go for New Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, like I, I would give it about seven and a half, uh, seven. I'll say solid seven, you know, round number. Seven out of ten. Um, I, I, man, I, I, I did not like I did not like Timu, uh, Jonathan Majors, man. I did not. It was, um, I, it's, I hated his character. Like, like even when he was like interesting and like, uh, like, like the part where he, 
like obviously the best part for him was uh he's never had a boner before right and he didn't know what it was called <laughs> right? and, <laughs> oh like, yeah yeah that part <laughs> they fall down yeah. into um uh, vault four and then he knows that they're in vault four and then he's yeah. like um uh, Lucy's like, you want to have sex? He's like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, it's like, for me, they, they, there's, there's a lot of weird sex quirks in this game that's so random. It's like, another thing is, you know that um the, the one-eyed patch blonde randomly having sex with the cousin? Yeah. That, that her it water broke? Like... That, that, that's so random. It's like, <laughs> that's so unnecessary. I, I, oh, yeah. we got to put it, we got to put in sex too. Because like, this is a rated R TV. So we got to put in sex. Even though it's yeah. super, super Dave, random. See, here's it. Dave says that Maximus, he probably put probably only put one into intelligence. <laughs> 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 yeah, he basically is like, I don't know what sex is. And then he's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, it gets really, really hard. And then <laughs> and then it explodes like a rocket. I'm like, dude, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then later on, he's like the he, you know he 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 wants to live in the vault because he's never experienced peace or anything like that. But yeah, but overall, yeah. Uh, I, I I would say it's a about a seven seven out of ten. It, it it's not yeah. like something's like ooh now it makes me want to play the video game. It makes it, it, I'm intrigued, right? But um, yeah, yeah. But it's a uh, yeah for this is like for me I have to give it two scores. Like if it's for normies or people have no idea what Fallout is. Yeah, it's that score seven eight because like it's like it can be. I understand why it's, it's like it's it's super woke in a lot of areas. I admit it's super woke in a lot of areas. So for more hardcore people, I would give it five maybe. I, I don't mm -hmm. people say that that's too high, but I I think five is five. It's not for me. It's like this could have been like it. This could have been a uber disaster like Rings of Power, but it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. So I, I think five for hardcore people, seven or an eight for normies. Yeah. I, 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 def I, I definitely do agree uh, with what the chat's saying. I think uh, Cooper, the ghoul, I would say he's like the standout for sure. And then, like like I said, in all, all the four characters that we're following, Cooper, the ghoul, slash the ghoul is number, uh, the most interesting, followed by the dog. And then Lucy, and <laughs> Lucy, and then uh, freaking uh, uh, was a wish.com Jonathan Majors. <laughs> <laughs> and may and maybe they'll recast, uh, what's it called, a Kang the Conqueror with this guy because he does sort of look like he does, yeah, he, look he like, does, he does like, like him, yeah. It's like sometimes, does this look like Jonathan Majors? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yo, yeah. uh, Tatsu Sama with the. I think it's Swiss Franks. A Sw is it Swiss Franks? With the $10, it's a peaches and cream. I mean, peaches and beer. Or it's a stellar, stellar blade peaches. Now, okay. Yeah. Last topic. Uh, uh, while we're still talking about uh, Fallout, I guess there was a big uh, Fallout a controversy that happened. And um, mm, yes. I guess this guy got uh, over 30 million views on this. And basically, here it is. And it says, quick and dirty. But the flatness bothered me enough. So basically, the the show would have been better if we got them thick, uh, juicy booty, uh, uh, big booty Latina stuff. So Gray, what do you think about this? Uh, if if this if the show had an had a better, uh, I forgot who I think Ella Purnell. I think that's the actress's name. I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, what do you think about um, you know, if, if the show had uh, big booties like this, uh, the, would the show would have been better? Wait, I, I, wait. Are you showing it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned. It. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. There, there it is. Sorry. There it is. I'm, I, I'm not showing it. There it is. Do you think that the show would be better if, uh, if right over here, uh, quick and dirty, but the flatness bothered me, uh, Fallout on Prime. If the show had a bigger ass for the characters, uh, would it, uh, would have been better? It would have been better, but. For me, it's not a deal breaker. But I think the more <laughs> interest, the more interesting part is Mudahar's take. Because <laughs> like, this for this is for people with porn addiction. Eh? <laughs> that's, that's yeah, the, that's it's so part. stupid. Yeah, it's, a, it's like now, now. Here's the thing, though. The one on the left. Okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna open a new tab and I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, super zoom in. You could tell this is highly airbrushed. 
Like, look at the seam over here. It's like super. The thing is that her butt is actually not this flat. Like, I've, I've, I've mm. looked, chat. I've like literally paused the show just to look at it. And her butt, she actually has a hip. She has hips. So she has her hips are a little bit wider and her butt isn't as flat. So I wonder who is the dumb ass art director that decided to go with, you know, let's make her have a guy's ass because that's basically how my ass looks like in chat. If you guys find this ass attractive, you're probably gay, but, um, but yeah, I, I would say it's a, it's not like a full on like bubble butt, but like it has this a little bit more, more ass cheeks in, in, uh, for, for Lucy, but yeah. Um, but overall, I think that if the show, <laughs> if the show had a, uh, I'm not saying that, this, that there wasn't anything for the guys, right? I'm not saying this, there wasn't anything for the guys. There's several, there's a good amount of nudity in, in in the show. However, you did see a lot of fat people in nudity as well. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, th yeah, this guy, uh, people are hating it right now. He are basically saying that another day, another man embarrass himself, right? If you go down to the comments right over here, go outside. Bro, watermark this. Can we make a new rule to comment on an appearance of a woman? You have to have touched a woman in the in at least once in your life. Wow, people are um not happy. I, I go outside, please. I'm begging you. Uh, you have never uh, felt a touch of a woman. You're 40 year old. Uh, you're 40 years old doing this. Uh, but yeah. But overall, I like this one right here. This one. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here with the uh, <laughs> right over here. That's the good one right there. That's how the show should be. But uh, <laughs> 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 but yeah, man. Um, I think overall the show the, the show is enjoyable. It's not bad. Um, I, I think I think overall for me as a normie, I give it a, a seven out of ten. Um, it's um, I wonder if you go back and rewatch it, like like you you'll sort of see things maybe connect the dots more. But um, but yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. It's um, I am looking forward to season uh, season two. So we'll see what season two brings. Of course, we're going to be headed to New Vegas, and uh, if that's any indicator of how the video game is, hopefully this season for season two is going to be really good. Right. So uh, let's see. All right. Um, anything else? Anything else for uh Fallout? Like any any, any like is anything that that we missed or something that you want to talk about? No, nah, yeah, over, yeah, it gives a lot of it, really pays tribute to the games, like the stuff that uh, people, um, people see in the games, like the the different kinds of food, the stim packs. And, okay, there's one part I like in the norm, the Norman story plot is when he was hacking the computer. That's that's mm -hmm. such a tribute to the video. That's how hacking in the video game is really like, like you're you're gonna you're gonna guess which. Uh, you're gonna find the word that's the actual password. I I like that they do, did that. It's the nice subtle touches that they do to the to the show that pays tribute to the video games. So yeah, I have uh, it, there's at least there's that. Like you can see the different the, the tiny Easter eggs that pay tribute to the video games. Mm -hmm. I really as someone who played the games, like yeah, I appreciate. That's why I gave gave it such a high score, even though probably it's probably too high. <laughs> but anyway, uh yeah, it's. For normies, it's a good show, but for hardcore, it'll probably depend how much you value the continuity of the story. If you really do, then you'll, it'll, it'll probably disappoint you. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.